Welcome to Photo Work. I'm Mylon. We have Shannon here with us today, as always. Hey. Uh, we're doing our part two of our interview with fashion photographer based out of LA, Robbie Mueller. He shares with us more career tips, why you should learn motion, and the power of being nice. Let's sit back and enjoy. Do you think that you will focus more on motion in the future, or do you think it'll just be mostly supplemental? Um, I think I would like to. Mm -hmm. I think it just it's more gear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that I, I can I can rent, but mm -hmm. I I think for me to really learn it, I'd have to buy it, and I just haven't like pulled the trigger yet. Well, um, it's like buying a car, so. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. Oh, I mean, I'm not even talking about that. Mm -hmm. I'm just talking about like gimbals and all that fun stuff. Oh but, yeah. Like, buying a red camera? No, I'll just rent that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think so. I think mm -hmm. I need to. I think if I want like my career to go in an upward trajectory, I think I need to. Mm -hmm. Even if it's, I don't know, I, just practicing both really hard. Because mm -hmm. I don't want to give up photo, but I definitely want to try s doing more video for mm -hmm. sure. But I don't know. What do you guys do? You guys do a lot of video? I mean, I know you were just saying a lot of yeah. video. Yeah, I, I, I do mm -hmm. dabble a little bit. Mm -hmm. It's good. Yeah. It is a totally different part of your brain because, like, if you're in the middle of a shoot and it's obviously, like, mostly a still shoot, mm -hmm. and you're like, okay, you have to switch your brain. Yeah. Okay, now we're doing motion. Yeah. Oh, wait, the lights aren't, if you don't have the hot lights right. Yeah. Or you're just, you have to, like, readjust. Yeah. And it's a whole different thing, and I feel like it slows things down. It does. Yeah. And I think if I had a choice, I would do one or the other, and mm -hmm. obviously I'd pick photo over it because I'm just more confident in that, but... Um, yeah, it is. It is like a, a big readjust. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. a lot of stuff is luckily on location, so you can kind of deal with the sun. That helps. Yeah. But even still, you mm -hmm. get crabby highlights and all that fun stuff with video too. So it's not like it's yeah. much better than shooting photos. <laughs> True. You know? True. Analogy: It's like hitting a speed bump on a freeway for me. Oh, that's yeah. interesting. Because you're flying along, shooting like, oh, I need to get video. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, readjust, okay. readjust. Change my brain. Yeah. And now I got to add motion to, you know, the shot. It is yeah, a huge it's a huge difference. And so it always makes every shoot way more, it feels just frantic. Yeah. <laughs> Even when I've done shoots where I'm like stills only and then they have like somebody doing video there as well. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's always the forgotten thing. But yep. somebody, for some reason, they put such a big emphasis on mm -hmm. it. And it's so strange to me that. Like I'll be shooting the look, and then they'll be like, "Okay, let's uh, we're good with that. Let's do the video guy." And then the model will already be in the changing room, changing the next look. And then they're like, "No, no, come back out because you have to do, you know." And then the videographer quickly is like, I'm "Sorry, I'm sorry, you know, uh, we're gonna do this quick little part." And then I, I feel bad for those people, mm -hmm. and I don't understand why there is such a big emphasis on something that they're willing to not really pay attention to, too. You know yeah. what I mean? It's just that they just really changed consumption mm -hmm. is what it is, I think. Like, oh, we want to maximize our dollar. So we're going yeah. to get this. Oh, this makes sense. They're both doing the same thing. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They both have cameras, so they're pretty yep. much the same. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. how it works. Yeah, that's how it works. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and also you get the same budget, and also uh, you get uh, no, no budget, actually. Yeah. yeah. They're like, and oh, and uh, usage? Uh, usage is um, social media, and uh, we're, we'll decide where we'll go from there. And you're like, okay, cool. I don't know how to budget for this. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Well, and it also sucks, too, speaking of usage, like social media rates being like lower than a print rate, but everything is social media, and that's yeah. where money comes from. Like, yeah. Yeah. why why aren't those flipped now? I don't know. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if you get on a big, big shoot, it's still going to be a good budget, mm -hmm. but it's it's probably not, I don't know, what, mm -hmm. it, what it used to be, mm -hmm. you know, and everything is just like, posted and mm -hmm. so instantaneous. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm sure you guys see it where people are like, where's the photos? Yeah. Like, You're like, oh. it's been 10 minutes. <laughs> it's two days. Yeah. Can I download my card first? You didn't even do there the you proofs go. yet. Yep. And, right. And you were asking for the, I was like, what? The, uh, the consumption level is just through the roof. Mm -hmm. It is. Social media eats all. Just, which needs, is, it needs to be fed. I wish that there was bigger budgets for things and I wish that there wasn't like the need to constantly have, I mean, for my own life, I wish there wasn't a need to constantly post things. But mm -hmm. also, I wish that same thing wasn't for the way the industry is right now. Mm -hmm. But it, it is what it is, I guess. We got to yeah. deal with it. I, I always, like, envision what it would be like to be, like, a photographer in, like, the 90s. Oh, yeah. Like, I heard stories. Um, my one teacher in college, he was in New York City, and 
he rode his bike every single day to go get bagels at this specific bagel shop that had like it was well known for having like photographers that went to it and he would just bring his portfolio in a book bag and like was ready to just talk to these like guys and women you know that were like big photographers and uh one day he rode with Terry Richardson. It's not like he's the best person in the world, but <laughs> he's a big photographer. He's a big name. Uh, yeah. Um, and uh, he just, the only thing that he could tell me about the story was that Terry Richardson had a, a bike chain wrapped around his waist and was riding with, he looked so metal, just like riding his bike down the street <laughs> and then went to this bagel shop. And then he, the he wasn't that big of a photographer at the time, but uh, my teacher was like, going to talk to him then he just wimped out oh but anyways cool little interesting story. yeah it's not that cool but terry richardson <laughs> wore, wore a chain belt for his bike and that's so funny to imagine like just like ripped terry richardson with like a chain just mm -hmm. <laughs> i don't know um so anyways i imagine being in those shoes i, I wish i was then now mm -hmm. instead of now i guess maybe i don't know that sounds kind of miserable too but I don't know. It's like the golden era. Almost. Well, yeah, it's 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 got a. It's romanticized. It is know. romanticized, it's, right? Yeah. It's, yeah, it's like the struggling poets or yeah, you know, musicians and stuff going, you know, coming in East Village, just That's grinding true. it out. Yeah, and now it's Instagram. Yeah, I'm grinding it out on my couch. Yeah, it's like silver light. <laughs> it, it is a lazy approach to it, and like, I mean, nobody prints anything. Nobody, you know, you don't call people or go meet. I mean, people used to just drop into agencies and stuff, and now it's like, yo, mm -hmm. <laughs> who's available to shoot? It's mm -hmm. like so weird. Mm -hmm. I always tell people, like, let's meet up, you know, in, in emails, especially clients that I've never worked with, just to put a face to the name and mm -hmm. that fun stuff, you know, and it the level of comfortability, too, that you get mm -hmm. with, like, meeting people in person yeah. is, like, so much better than, mm -hmm. you know, just emailing and then going to the shoot a couple days later. It's like, it's just a huge difference, I think, and it's good advice to people that, I don't know, want to keep clients or want to get new clients. Be as friendly as you can, I guess, you know? Basically, don't be a dick. Yeah, that, I think it's a good life <laughs> motto. I've been practicing it since 1991. Um, it seems to work out. It does, mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. But I think that's important. I think being fun and mm -hmm. nice. Like, on set, I like to have as much fun as possible within like the realm of like professionalism. Of course. Sometimes I might overstep the boundary, but I think it all comes back, you know? And I think that's one way to keep clients is just being yourself mm -hmm. because they know what they're gonna get and it's like a two part show, you know, you gotta put on a show and you also have to shoot great photos. And mm -hmm. I think being able to do both is like, it's hard. I can't imagine like being, not that good at social situations like mm -hmm. it, it would be a pretty hard job i feel like and i think um to anybody who might suffer with like you know anx anxious moments or whatever just like getting comfortable with yourself and comfortable with other people is like a super important thing to, to like learn or like work on mm -hmm. probably more so than photo itself mm -hmm. honestly you know yeah it's a relationship mm -hmm. <clears throat> what I always say is I, I don't want to spend a good part of my day with a dick. Yeah, definitely not. We're not. Are we? You can mark explicit. Who cares? <laughs> Ex explicit. Explicit. <laughs> I'm sorry. You don't have to put that in. But if you do, <laughs> Ma mom, I love you. <laughs> so I'm going to circle back to like the set experience. Yes. Do you have like a formula or do you feel it out every time for each client? Um... I think, like I said, trying to meet people beforehand mm -hmm. helps in getting that, like an understanding of really what they want. Mm -hmm. And then being able to pull off of what they want and do your own thing, you know? And mm -hmm. um, there's no formula because I feel like every job is going to throw some sort of like hurdle at you and you got to jump over it and figure out another, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I feel like just make sure you're prepared with gear like stupid things you know like if you need a tripod for the day make sure you have your tripod thing like at the bottom of your you know at your bag somewhere so you can just grab it and put your tripod on because like there's been times where i've like planned on shooting on a tripod for something and then 
forgot the mount. And I'm like, this is so stupid, you know? So I bought another one, so I always have two. But just stupid things like that, just being prepared ahead of time as much as possible. Just take the night before your shoots and go through your gear. I think labeling your gear helps too. If you have assistance, mm -hmm. that makes their lives a lot easier. Um, in general, I think all those things are like a good formula. Also, having assistance in general, if there's budget for them, it makes your life easier. Even if it's like a pretty easy job that you know you can just swing out and do it you know, no problem. It, it's definitely beneficial to have an assistant there just to be like, looks good. Because that one extra person bringing like a level of like confidence to the set is like pretty nice, honestly. So I, I try and get assistance as much as possible. Um, just want to get other people work and to, to have that person that's looking at the computer being like, yeah, yeah awesome, you know? How did you get your first breakthrough job? Well, that, the Revolve stuff. Yeah. Revolve, right. And that, yeah. how was that? Was it through Instagram? Did you hit them straight up? I knew a girl that actually was the one that told me to move out here. Shout out to AJ. Um, she told me, move out here, move out here, move out here. And I was like, I can't. I'm in school, silly. <laughs> uh, but then I was, I did. And then she was like doing everything in her power to make me not have to move back. And, um, She's like, oh, I work for, I'm going to think of the company's name. Not right now, though. <laughs> <laughs> Alliance Apparel. Oh. Yeah, I got it. I got it. They have Tula Rosa, MBD, a couple other brands. Oh, yeah, yeah. She worked there, and she was just, like, pushing me on them <laughs> hardcore. And I met them. It was super intimidating. He, because I, I met the owner of the company, and he just, like, met Kanye West and drove Kanye West somewhere. And he was telling me how, like, it's like, yeah, I had to ask Kanye West what he wanted to listen to. <laughs> He's like, I didn't want to be corny and put on Kanye West <laughs> when he got into my car. So I just asked him what he wanted to listen to. I really so, want to know what he said. I don't, I don't actually know, yeah. I don't know what he said. Kanye West. Yeah, he probably did, <laughs> definitely said that, definitely. Um, and so I was like super intimidated by that guy. I don't know, he knew Kanye West. I was like some Midwestern guy. I was like, hey. <laughs> Yeah, Kanye West is cool. Um, but I think that was just my breakthrough. And having that friend, that, mm -hmm. that like backbone, I, th I mean, that, that goes with anything in the industry. Is like you're never going to get stuff just by being you unless you know people that know people and whatever. And I don't think that that means that you have to go out every single day and meet people. But if you know the right people, they're mm -hmm. going to somehow help you out, even if they don't even mean to. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. One little thing could turn into like a bunch of big things. So... Um, just meeting people, meeting nice people. Like, yeah. It's important. The nice ones. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The nicest ones. Yeah. Otherwise you're turned off by them and you're like, mm -hmm. I'd rather not, you know? Dick, 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 dick. If they are they dicks, then you do not want to have anything to do with them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I feel like you're not going to get hired anyway because you're just not gelling. You're not. What are on whatever dick level they're at. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, and that is a problem with the industry. I feel like is for some reason there is an, an elitist mm -hmm. feel to it, mm -hmm. more so than like any other industry I've ever seen. Like that and coffee. The coffee industry, everybody's like elitist, you know? And the photo film world is like strangely weird like that too. And then when you separate yourself from the dicks, then it's really easy to, I don't know, find the right people. Honestly, and that's important for sure. Um, and same with clients too, finding non-dick clients, just nice people. Um, I don't know. I guess they have to like you first though. <laughs> Otherwise, they're not going to pay you money. Yeah. Yeah, I could like them as much as I, I want. <laughs> Man, I'm the coolest person today. But if they don't like me, then it doesn't really matter. Doesn't matter. <laughs> nope. How do they not like you though? I mean, it's not been a problem for me. I'm just saying. Right. <laughs> Uh, I wanted to talk to about one of your favorite times on set. Like, do you have like a very memorable moment? No. <laughs> <laughs> no and specifically, I think it's actually more so the people. Yeah. Like if it's somebody that you're like good friends with, like a certain makeup artist or a certain stylist that you're like, we work so well together. You're so nice. You know, mm -hmm. um, those are the, the memorable moments to me, I think. 
And the same with model. If I know the model, it usually makes things more fun. Um, but yeah, I think that all in combination together. And same with the client. If it's a client I really love, I think just having fun with it mm -hmm. is memorable to me as opposed to specific moments. Um, so yeah, just make sure you're surrounding yourself with good people and then mm -hmm. the sets will just automatically be memorable. Mm -hmm. And when you're able to bring people on that you like working with or they bring you on because they like you that that makes it just cool mm -hmm. you know you're like i'm glad to be working with the people i like otherwise you know it's great to meet new people too and that of course helps out with just like moving your way through the industry but mm -hmm. um having those like comfortability people that are just always by your side you're like mm -hmm. i love you yep. yes support system yeah it's good like what do you love most about being a photographer um, making my own schedule, being self re reliable. I don't know. Yeah. Being, is that the word? I don't reliant. Know. Yeah. Reliant. <laughs> Self-reliant. Uh, all those things because I've worked jobs where you have a schedule. Mm -hmm. It's like crazy. It's crazy different. Like if I want to stay up till three in the morning playing video games, then I could do it. If I have a job in the morning, I probably don't do it, but you can't do that with any other job, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think that's one thing that I love. I also love technology mm -hmm. and it has a lot to do with technology, whether it's your computer that you choose or it's your camera stuff. Um, but yeah, just having the freedom, honestly, mm -hmm. is the biggest thing. And meeting cool people, because mm -hmm. at least you're gonna find somebody that agrees with you on how to shoot photos or whatever. Mm -hmm. and, there's a very endless level of learning that happens with it too. Like you're just constantly learning. I think it's one of those fun things that you don't get with very many jobs. Sometimes you're just like set in your way and you just like do your thing. Um, so all those things in combination make it the most fun thing ever. <laughs> and like, it's crazy. I don't know what your guys' family does or anything, but my dad is a UPS driver and my mom's a nurse. And like when I told them I wanted to do photo, they were like, no you're stupid and then like eventually they just had to realize that they had to trust it and then I think it paid off for sure but it's impossible to explain to those people that are doing those jobs like how it works because even I still don't know you know all the time what's going to happen or how it is but it's it's like pretty cool mm -hmm. you know yeah. the craziest is when my grandparents like think about it my grandpa is literally mind blown. He calls me, he tells me two things. Watch out for earthquakes and how are you doing what you're doing again? <laughs> he was a carpenter his whole life, like yep. literally since he was like 14. So he's like, you're stupid. Like, what are you doing? But he, he's like impressed. So it's cool. You know, it's cool to show those people that didn't understand it, um, that it's possible. And uh, it, it all of those things in combination just make it so freaking cool. Yeah. I love it. The important thing that I learned when I was first starting, I actually should have answered this when you guys asked me for, about when I first started, but I was working at Starbucks, like I said, and my buddy was like, are you a barista or a photographer? And I was like, well, right now I'm a barista, but I'm going to be a photographer. He's like, no, you're a photographer. He's like, do everything you can to not be a barista and be a photographer instead. And I was like, well, what's, what's the easiest way for me to be a photographer right now? And then he was like, paid tests. Mm. And I was like, oh, okay, sure. That seems easier said than done. He's like, just hit up the agencies, tell them whatever. You, if there's any girls that need paid tests or whatever, you, you should, you're down to do it. He said, how many paid tests a month do you need to do to pay your rent? And at the time, I only paid $900, which is awesome. So I only needed to do three paid tests. He's like, so you have 30 days to do three shoots. And granted, of course, everybody has more bills than that. But to pay your rent, that's nothing. This gives you 27 days rest of the month to do whatever the heck you want. So obviously, you're going to get more work, right? Mm -hmm. And I was like, whoa, this guy's onto something. So anyways, I think that's super important to anybody listening to like find a means to make money with photo because whatever you're doing that you're not interested in is never gonna be fun compared to photo. And being able to make money doing photo is extra fun because you're like, wow, I made so much money doing basically nothing. Um, and it's, it's cool. Anyways, Jared, thank you for that. I will never forget that. And it's literally stuck with me to this day. I still think like, 
Oh shit, I only have to do a certain amount of paid tests this month to do what? Okay, cool, you know? And it mostly goes back into photos somewhere, somehow. My girlfriend's like, let's go to Hawaii. I'm like, yeah, that's great. Buys a new camera, you know? Yeah. Stupid, stupid, <laughs> stupid. But <laughs> anyways, pay test people and just photo stuff in general. It's really fun. Okay, really I'm really is. done now. I'm okay, sorry. we're done now. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you again. Thank you it was guys. a blast. That was a really good <laughs> soundbite. Really yeah. Until next time. Teaser. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us. It wouldn't be YouTube if we weren't shamelessly asking you to like and subscribe. Yeah. Also, comment down below of who you want to see us interview, what you want to learn, and also the most important, where to get the best tacos in your town is. Because we love tacos. Tacos are good. Bye.